Welcome to Mother's Day Worship from Bethesda. We're glad you've come along. Welcome to worship on this Mother's Day here at Bethesda United Church. Welcome to all who have gathered here in our sanctuary and those who will be joining us on our YouTube channel. Our opening prayer. God of resurrection, you have rolled the stone away and the tomb of our world has been opened wide. With the dawn has come a new creation. Let our celebration today empty our tombs, renew our lives, and release your power. Through the risen Christ we pray. Amen. Of note in being Bethesda this morning is that in just a few short weeks, it will be our annual white brick service of celebration and uh, we encourage all of you who are able to plan now to be in attendance at that celebration. Also in our Being Bethesda is noted uh, pastoral care, urgent pastoral care directions and times and places of gathering in uh, the weeks after next Sunday. Beginning with May 28th, worship will be at Ryerson at 10 a.m. So please take and plan to uh, be at worship according to the schedule that has been developed through our collaborative ministry team. So welcome to this service of Mother's Day worship and uh, celebration. God it is who has called us together to worship. God has called us to continue to worship in spirit and in truth and our opening hymn for the beauty of the earth. Number 226 in Voices United.
interruption in our worship flow this morning. Technology gremlins have been with us here today. And just to let everyone know, I arrive early here at Bethesda. I set everything up. I walk through and all is fine. And then, and then, some Sundays I return and the wrong media sermon is brought, broadcast and we're a little bit in disarray. So, Natalia, thank you for being with us this morning. If you could please play a hymn of your choice while I redirect our worship this morning. It won't take too long. Thank you. scriptures this morning to be begin with Isaiah chapter 49 and verses 15 to 16. Let us hear the word of the Lord. Can a woman forget her baby that she is nursing? Feel no pity for the child? She has born. Even if these were to forget, I shall not forget you. Look, I have engraved you on the palms of my hands. Your ramparts are ever before me. And again from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 66. so that you may be nursed and satisfied from she who nurses you, so that you may drink deep with delight. For the Lord says this, Look, I am going to send peace flowing over her like a river and like a stream into the glory of the nations. You will be nursed and carried on her hip and fondled in her lap. As a mother comforts a child, so shall I comfort you, and you will be comforted in Jerusalem. And from the Gospel according to Luke, chapter 1, the Song of Mary. Mary set out at that time and went as quickly as she could into the hill country to a town of Judah. She went into Zacharias' house and greeted Elizabeth. Now it happened that as soon as Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leapt in her womb, and Elizabeth 
was filled with the Holy Spirit. She gave a loud cry and said, Of all women you are most blessed, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. Why should I be honored with a visit from the mother of my Lord? Look, the moment your greeting reached my ears, the child in my womb leapt for joy. Yes, blessed is she who believed that the promise made her by the Lord would be fulfilled. And Mary said, My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, because he has looked upon the humiliation of his servant. Yes, from now onwards, all generations will call me blessed. For the Almighty has done great things, holy is his name, and his faithful love extends age after age. For he has used the power of his arm, he has root, routed the arrogant of heart, he has pulled down princes from their thrones, and raised high the lowly. He has filled the starving with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the help of Israel, his servant, mindful of his faithful love. Thanks be to God for his word to us. And now may the meditations of all of our hearts and may the thoughts of our lips, the words that are spoken, Bear fruit in your sight and into the world, we pray. Amen. So we come to Bethesda again on this Mother's Day. And I'm guessing for the very precious few who do not know it, the very word Bethesda carries an important note of Mother's Day. For the word means place of of healing. And while there are many places and perhaps people and channels of healing, surely on this Mother's Day, mothers echo that very Bethesda word of a place of healing. Now my own journey with Mother's Day and churches and places of worship has been varied there have been churches that totally ignore Mother's Day. You'd have to ask them the reasons why. Maybe they're liturgical purists. And yes, Mother's Day does not appear in the church liturgical calendar. But neither does other important days. And so we come to Mother's Day, liturgical calendar aside. Then I've been in churches where the option has been to rename and retitle Mother's Day to Christian Family Sunday. Well, I'm not really fond of that expression either. What about Jewish Family Day or Islamic Family Day? What about other expressions of that key aspect of being human? families and being together. No, I think for, because of history, because of our experience, because of the scriptures that we have read, it is right, good, and true to lift up mothers and mothering on this Mother's Day in this time of worship. Now, some of you may know that it was Anna Jarvis, pictured here, after the American Civil War that began the idea of Mother's Day. It was began as Mothering Friendship Day. Anna managed to call together and to assemble mothers of both the Confederate and Union armies after the war. And her spirit was, her intention was, 
to seek ways of bringing healing and health through those gifts of mothering. Well, in doing this, Anna Jarvis was perhaps doing a new thing in North America, but there have been other similar expressions of lifting up mothers through various world faiths and through various traditions. In the United Kingdom, there was a Mothering Sunday whose origins were those who had to flee from their towns to other towns, whether through persecution or disease or uprootedness or by choice. And on this Mothering Sunday, the invitation was to all to come back and to worship and be present at their mother church, wherever that was. The expression of Mother's Day through the works of Anna Jarvis eventually became nationalized and recognized in the United States and Canada. In 1908 and 1914. So really it's not that long ago, but I'm sure holds a very important place to all of us. And yes, here at Bethesda, as there is a Mother's Day, time of worship, so there will be a Father's Day when the calendar turns in that direction. Mother's Day here at Bethesda does fall within the liturgical season of Easter. Easter with its own themes of birth and rebirth. The gift of life. The gift of enduring through death into resurrected life. And so our very season of Easter proclaims those signatory symbols and rhythms of life and death and the gift of life. And then just a few weeks ago, again, in this season of Easter, we recognized and paused for Earth Day, naming that spirituality which names Mother Earth as giving us life and breath and health and variety to be nurtured and cared for. Our ongoing theme in 2023, is that of a tree with deep roots. And there are, as we saw and heard, mother trees that give life and health and warning to a network of communications through other trees. And so into this historical Mother's Day through Anna Jarvis, into this creation-based Mother's Day through Earth Day and Psalm 1, let us again hear these scriptures, which are very poignant, which are very particular in lifting up the gifts of mothers. Isaiah 49. Hear the scripture again. Can a mother forget the baby at her breast and have no compassion on the child she has born? Though she may forget, I will not forget you. See, I have engraved you on the palms of my hands. Your walls are ever before me. I believe it's important to hear and read and receive these scriptures, these very earthy and clear and none too subtle scriptures as lifting up that very physical, those very physical gifts of mothering that we celebrate today. As we do so, let's remember that our faith is a faith of body, mind, and spirit. Not earth on one side and heaven on the other. Not the body on one side and spirit on the other. But each flowing into each other. When we gather to celebrate baptism, the water that is poured for cleansing is not just symbolic. It is meant to and by faith and prayer conveys 
The giving of the Spirit as life-giving water. And when we gather at communion, it too is not merely symbolic. In the giving of bread and wine, we receive the resurrected life of Christ in bodily form. And so on Mother's Day, in keeping with the prophet Isaiah, we receive what I will choose to call the sacramental gifts of mothers and mothering. And yes, Isaiah paints a picture very explicitly of God caring for God's people in the same way as a mother cares for the child that she is nursing. And that God will not forget us even in that rhetorical question, in asking, can a mother forget the child that she nurses? While scripture can be heard and applied in various ways, and it's important to be honest to say that not all of us, not all of God's children have experienced mothers in this caring and nurturing way. Scripture gives this as the ideal, the aim, the image of how God loves and cares for us and how we would see those charged with that care doing also. The second reading from Isaiah parallels this first one in these words. As a mother comforts her child, so will I comfort you. I'm guessing, I'm hoping, there's not one person gathered today, whether here or in an online experience, that has not experienced God's care and comfort through a mother or a mother in presence. And in receiving those gifts, in cherishing those memories, in guarding and preserving that love, Scripture says very straightforwardly, as a mother comforts her child, so will I comfort you. So in receiving these gifts, a mother in comfort, we receive the gift of God. And so, again, my hope, my prayer is that all of us have received that comfort from a mother or a mothering person in our lives, and so have been visited by the Spirit of God. The Spirit which is also painted in Scripture, as we will see in our closing hymn, as spirit or breath or wisdom all of which scholars agree are a feminine depiction of the God who is love. Our third scripture is the Song of Mary and the story of Elizabeth seeing Mary, Mary seeing Elizabeth and rejoicing in the gifts that they are each bearing the gift of the prophet John, the gift of Christ our Lord. And so those two figures, those two expressions of God's presence, born Elizabeth and Mary, ought to be seen, I think, as reason enough to celebrate and to know God's gifts on this Mother's Day. But scripture also goes into details. The book of Proverbs, chapter 31, gives a whole litany of the woman of honor and dignity. You may have read this scripture. It talks about things like considering a field and buying it. It talks about things like caring for children. It talks about things such as caring for the poor 
and ends in this exaltation. Strength and dignity are her clothing, and she smiles at the future. Into this high calling of having a basis in faith that women of faith and people of faith are called to reside. To expressions here at Bethesda of those who have heard this call, an invitation went out to share gifts of love and mothering, and so we have this lovely picture of Blanche and her children. And the scripture, strength and dignity are Blanche's clothing, and she smiles at the future. She has confidence in her children and in the faith that brings her forward. And one more, the mother who is in our home, who was by invitation and really command required to be at Melrose where Meg is involved as a staff person, Janet. And every Mother's Day, you may know this story, there is the required trek to find the first trillions of the year. And no, this is not Janet looking out for the mythic OPP who is said to reside under, any tri under every trillium as she digs one up. She's just looking towards the camera. And there are the trillions, an expression of God's beauty and a Mother's Day tradition in our home. Strength and dignity are Janet's clothing, and she smiles at the future. And into that scripture, we are all invited, moms and mothers and grandmothers and sisters, and all of us, to know that strength and that dignity from the Lord. One more expression of Mother's Day and some possibilities of why we celebrate, of who our moms are. You may recognize yourself in this expression, or you may think, if only. Take this in. Yeah. 
She's a new one that holds our family in place. Even now, 27 years old, she calls me every week and sees how I'm doing. She sent me care packages halfway across the world. She's totally selfish. Selfish. Selfless. 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 And she doesn't she cry about you? She may go to kill her. That's the biggest blessing. Reaching out to them, 
May our community partners and our commitments be unto those especially who are victimized by violence, who are children without a home, and who are mothers without a sense of their dignity and calling. Continue to create Bethesda to be a mothering place of healing and help and hope. Amen. The Offertory.
Christ, the love of God, and the peace of the Holy Spirit be with you and flow through you this day and always. Amen. And a very happy Mother's Day to you all, wherever you find yourselves, the rest of this day. God bless. See you again. Yeah, happy Mother's Day to you.